Welcome, everyone. This is Bill Stearns, NE4RD, co-host of Linux in the Ham Shack podcast. You can find our podcast over on lhspodcast.info. This is uh, part two of my series of installing uh, Linux in the, on my Ham Shack computer here. And we, uh, we have a base system here of uh, Ubuntu 17.04. In the last episode, we added the Ham Radio Pure Blend packages along with the uh, PPAs from CQR Log, FL Digi, and WSJTX. So today we're going to continue on and configure CQR Log. So we're going to go ahead and uh, run CQR Log for the first time here. So the very first time you run it, it's going to pop up and say, hey, you're running this for the first time. Do you want to save data to the local machine? You hit yes. And what that will do is actually create a MySQL database for your um, your log. Once the log is created, you'll see you have over here in your database connection window uh, a new log called log001. I suggest renaming that log to something more meaningful to you, like mine is going to be named at NE4RD after my call sign. And you want to check this box down here. This is open recent log after program start. What this allows you to do is, once you have it open here, this is a CQR log 2.10. It'll uh, always open up to this window when you log in, which is kind of what you want. You don't want to have to go through that connection string every single time. Um, when you run it for the first time, or maybe periodically, it's going to say, hey, I got some new DXCC tables and some other stuff. Do you want to download and install it? Just go ahead and hit yes, and this will download rather quickly to your uh, database. Now it says, do you want some QSL managers? Sure, why not? All right, now that that's done, uh, we can start configuring it. So in order to configure uh, CQR log, you go into File and Preferences. And it has a pretty detailed configuration set up for your your logger here so we're going to go through each one of these items one at a time and i'll just go through what, how i would set it up for my particular station your your mileage may vary on your particular station obviously our call signs are different and everything else but in general you should get the uh the idea of what we're trying to do here so the default web browser setup is for firefox i use google chrome i know it can be evil but whatever uh, you just type in the executable name for the web browser so I typed in Google dash Chrome. Um, here's some options here for showing stuff. Uh, you can turn off that uh, prompt at the very beginning uh, for checking for new versions of DXCC tables and QSL managers. If you don't want that uh, nag to come up every single time you load the software. Um, you can check some of this other stuff. I normally check the show sunrise sunset and show distance in miles. And then I leave the rest of this alone for the uh, program tab. Let's move on to station. Station, you're going to put in your call sign, your name. Yeah, can't type again. Your QTH, Billings, Montana, and your location, DN55QT. Then go on to new QSO. So the new QSO sets up default parameters for every new QSO that you have. Like if you only run QRP, you can go ahead and change your default power setting to five watts. Or if you have some other, ooh, excuse me, some other rig that uh, has some random power setting, or if you always use like 25 or 50 watts, you can go ahead and put that in here. I'm just going to leave it at 100 for right now. If you want a default for uh, commenting, you can, like maybe which computer it came from or whatever. Um, here's some other options. Uh, enable auto, auto mark QSO fields. I don't really mess around with that. Uh, use spacebar to move between fields. I'm a tab user, so uh, I tend to use tab. Skip mode, yeah, whatever. That's that's good because we're going to hook this up to uh, to the rig control, so we will get the mode and the frequency when it's connected. Uh, refresh data after save, not really necessary. Auto search on ham QTH or QRZ, depending upon how you set it up. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. Um, you can have it so it ignores uh, QSL information. And the rest of this stuff looks pretty innocuous. So I'm going to leave the rest of this the same. Visible columns. So the visible columns are what shows up in this screen here. So 
And also what shows up in the uh, the QSL window when you look at your whole log, which we'll see in a little bit. Um, so I'm going to probably check state because I want to see that. Uh, power, sure. Uh, don't need to see some of this other stuff. I like to see if it's been uh, synced up to Logbook of the World and EQSL. And you can also check this one here, which kind of compiles all your uh, QSL information into one column. Bands. The band tab is uh, what bands you normally work. Um, I do work um, 60 meters, so I'll click that. Don't work any of these other ones at the moment. Uh, you can always change this later on. Let's move on to transmitter control. So the transmitter control is going to be using rig control D, which is the Hamlib library. And we'll just make sure that rig control D is actually there. So I'm going to go back to my terminal here and just do which rig control D. And yes, it is in user bin rig control D. So I don't have to change that. I will be hooking up two radios to this, but right now I only have one radio hooked up. So this is my uh, FT450D is hooked up here. Um, the rig model, you're going to select which rig model it is. And I'm looking for 127, which is my Yezu FT450. The device is uh, which port it's actually connected to. Uh, mine is actually hooked up to a real uh, serial port. So it will be uh, uh, TTYS01, which is basically COM1 for uh, Windows users. If you need any uh, extra command line arguments, you can put those in here now. And then you want to enable run rig control D when the program starts. Serial speed, I believe mine's set at 4800 baud, and everything else I'll just leave default. And do I want to show transmit TRX stuff in the console? No, not really. Uh, if it doesn't work, then we'll troubleshoot it a different way. So I'll leave that as is. For my radio too, I'll, I'll eventually be populating this with the uh, ICOM 703, and I'll show you how to find that device when we uh, when we hook up that one. So we'll do that in a later episode. So let's move on to rotator control. I don't have a rotor, so I don't really do anything with this. Modes. Uh, this is just set up for your rigs. If you want some default uh, bandwidths for the rig, It'll flip the filters automatically for you. I'll just leave that as default for now. QTH profiles. So the QTH profiles is uh, pretty good because if you do operations in multiple locations and you want to be able to segment that into your uh, log, then uh, you want to enable this. So right now, if I go in here, there are no QTH profiles. So I need to define one as my base one. So I'm going to do a new. Give it a profile number one. My locator is going to be the home QTH. This is a, uh, um, I'm just right home QTH here. And then you can put your FT450D, uh, what kind of antenna you have, and anything else you want in there. It doesn't really matter. And then you hit save. So now I have one, one locator. So I'm going to go ahead and select that as my uh, default profile. Next one is the export tab. So this is what it exports when it creates an export file. And you can have it export everything if you want. Um, I'm just going to leave the defaults here for now. DX cluster. So this will be uh, the DX cluster uh, connection that you have. If you want to have uh, specific bands that you don't really pay attention to, like for me, I don't do 220, 900, and all these other ones. I don't really care about spots for those frequencies. I'll go ahead and leave the spots for uh, the two new bands, uh, 600 meters and 2200 meters. Uh, you can have a call sign alert, and then you can actually execute a command when the call sign is spotted. So there's some customization you can do there, too, if you're looking for something specific. So we're going to go ahead and check the uh, show country name and DX cluster spot and connect to DX cluster after program startup. So we'll leave that uh, on as well. Fonts, uh, if you want to change what the look and feel of this is, uh, right now I think it's fine. So I won't really change anything. But if you want to change it, you can you can change it. 
uh, the grid list settings. Again, if you want some special looking stuff, you can uh, enable these uh, configuration parameters. Not necessary to really mess with. Worked all zone colors. Again, if you want custom colors on everything, you can do that. I'm not going to mess around with that. Uh, same thing with uh, islands on the air. Memberships. You can put in, uh, if you have a national affiliation or something like that, you can go ahead and uh, apply those here and put your number in. Um, I don't really have any I want to put in here at the moment. Um, so I will come back to that. I believe I have a number for uh, the North American uh, QRP group, uh, but I don't have my number readily available. So I won't mess with that at all. So let's go on to band map. Band map, you really shouldn't have to do much with here either. Um, has some, uh, if you want the band map to save after close, so anything on the band map, it'll keep it on there. Um, again, if you want these options, you can go ahead and check them. It's not really needed for what, uh, what we're doing right now. X planet support. So this is for your, uh, your gray line and mapping and everything else like that. Um, X planet should be installed. We can again check to make sure that's there. Let's just do a which X planet. Yeah, sure enough, it's user bin X planet. So we shouldn't have to do anything special for that. Zip code tracking. I'm not really going to do this. This is another thing you can do. Logbook and uh, Logbook the World and EQSL. So yeah, here's where you want to definitely hook that up if you have Logbook of the World. <coughs> and same thing for the EQSL site. And you can include uh, confirmed countries in your DXCC statistic. Uh, and you can also use it for confirmed countries for new country or new band, etc. So everything looks good there. And I don't think I'm going to change anything else there. So I do have the uh, WinCur USB installed, but I, I don't have the configuration information on it right now. So I'm going to skip that for right now. So we'll come back to that uh, once I confirm what my information is. Uh, the FL Digi and uh, WSJ interface. This is uh, what you want to have for running these two applications. Um, so let's figure out where our path to FL Digi is. So. FL Digi is in user bin. And we want to use the frequency from there and the mode from there and the RST from there. That sounds good. And we'll do the same thing with WSJTX. Also in user bin. And we'll also use the information from WSJTX. All right, auto backup. So this is a backup that can occur every time you close out your log program. Someone had mentioned to me uh, just the other day about, oh, I don't want to have to create a MySQL dump file every time. Well, you can go ahead and create a backup automatically every, uh, every time the program exits. And I would suggest doing that just to save your bacon should something actually occur. And you can either have the backup file be a call sign date time. Or call sign only. So if you have the call sign only, it'll just constantly overwrite that file. I'll just go ahead and leave the date time because I don't uh, I don't mind burning a little drive space for backups. And then you can also have it so it uh, compresses it with tar tar gz. So tar gz it. So that's uh, that you can leave as well. External viewers. I'll probably leave this all as default except for HTML files. We'll just go to Google Chrome there as well. And let's keep on going. All book support. Ham QTH. So Ham QTH, you can either have Ham QTH or QRZ. I don't have my uh, XML subscription right now to QRZ, so I'll just leave it as Ham QTH. And I just type my password in there. RBN support. 
This is our check-in for yourself, uh, reverse beacon network. Uh, typically, you want to look for yourself on the reverse beacon network. So uh, you put your call sign in both locations, and you can also have it connect after the log is open. So you can check that auto connect box. Online log upload. So these are part of your uh, your uh, auto stuff. You can have it automatically upload to club log. There's my email address. Please feel free to spam me. The HRD log.net is for the Ham Radio Deluxe uh, logger. Uh, I'm not going to enable that because I don't have one that I can remember. <laughs> Close the status of log upload window after it's upload. Yes, so you want that to go away as soon as the upload's gone. And the question is, do you want to ignore changes caused by Logbook of the World, EQSL? Yeah, so let's just go ahead and do that because sometimes it changes zones or whatever. It's um, you can you can have it change it in those logging programs. I don't really use those for uh, for any wards tracking. I guess I could, but maybe I'll uh, I'll leave that unchecked. So if something changes from Logbook of the World, it'll just go ahead and uh, go ahead and update those. And let's see, last one is propagation. And uh, we got the basic uh, solar brief here, and it says it showed as propagation as an image. Sure, why not? Um, otherwise, you can show as text information, and it'll give you whatever you want here. So I'm done. There are no other tabs here. I mean, okay. And if you see here, it's kind of already updated with my QTH profile and everything else. And the time looks pretty good. Good for uh, Zulu time and my time. So that looks good. Okay, so uh, we're going to see if the rig control works. We're going to try uh, see if it'll refresh and see if we get an error. Right now I'm on 7.074 on my rig and look at that. It's not working. So let's go ahead and quit program. And you can see it made that export and you can see where the exports are in your uh, dot config directory cqr log and it should be in database yes so there it is so that's your database directory it has the mysql database so don't delete any of those files but it has the log so you can see it created a log right today and as the date and time, and of course it compressed it. So there you go, that works fine. So now let's see if we can get that uh, rig control working. I'm gonna bring up uh, CQR log again. And what is that? Look, we, we're not connecting to the rig. I bet it's because we're not part of the dial-out group. So let's figure out the rig control issue here. It's most likely the dial-out user issue. So let's take a look at the groups and see if we're in the dial-out group, which we're not. So we need to add our user to the dial-out group by using the user mod command. And we want to add ourselves to the dial-out group. And then now, we should be part of that group. So after a quick little restart of, the, uh, of my session to uh, refresh the, the user permissions that I made changes to, I added myself to the dial-out group. Because if you look at your devices, in this case, dev TTYSO, S0, sorry. Um, it, is, it is a dial-out user group um, permissions. So we need to have those permissions in order to access the device. So we're going to go ahead and start CQR log and see if it can read my radio now. And I do have two screens, so that's why the, uh, the splash screen goes in the center of the, both of them. So here we are. It did come up, and it shows that I'm on 20 meters, and I'm in uh, a PSK mode or packet mode. 
which is right for this rig. It's in the USB data mode. So I'm going to switch over to sideband. And you can see the, that changed pretty quickly. We're going to just change the frequency. We're going to go up to like, well, you know, 14, 225, 230. Yep, so the frequency all seems to adjust. I probably want to update my font so that looks a little prettier in there. So everything fits. Um, the band changes. There's 30 meters. There's 40 meters. There's 80 meters. And there's 160 meters. And here is 6 meters. So yeah, everything seems to be working pretty fine. And on this rig, I need to go into my memory mode to get into six or 60 meters. And that seems to be fine too. This one has channels. So it's all channelized. I don't have an update on this rig yet. I don't know if they've put one out from Yezu. So uh, I can't uh, directly tune 60 meters. So that works fine. So yeah, so there we go. And we can confirm that rig control is running in the background, which it should be. You can use the PS command. And we can see that there it is. It's running in the background. Rig control D is running and it has the uh, command options to run that you know, module 127, which is for the Yezu rig. So yeah, so there we go. We have fully configured CQR log for our system when we have it talking to one radio and everything else is set up. So I think we'll stop here on this particular uh, this particular episode with just CQR log fully configured because there's a lot of stuff in this episode. And we'll continue on next time with importing an ADIF file from another logger and then doing the cleanup of the log.